let's continue with another example where we might see some opposites at work and c could hopefully clarify uh, what we were trying to describe about opposites from that last example. We see two fractions to add that have different denominators, so we know finding common denominator is up first. To do that, we will factor each denominator. What are your thoughts about factoring this trinomial? I would think about a pair of numbers multiplied together as negative 28, added together positive 3, positive 7, and negative 4. Can we factor this denominator, 16 minus x squared? Two terms, they are both squares. We have a difference of squares. We're, we would m probably much more often see it looking like x squared minus 16, but it's still a difference of squares that when I write it in factored form, since the 16 came first and the x came second, I will write it as 4 plus x and 4 minus x. You know, these two terms were swapped, so when I write it factored, they're still swapped. And a quick check that doing FOIL would give us back to this, would take us back to 16 minus x squared. Okay, there's that binomial factored. Now we build the LCD. We need to use an x plus 7 once. What else? x minus 4, we have it once there. And that's a 4 minus x. We know those are opposites, so there's something going on there. How about 4 plus x? There's definitely nothing else that's a 4 plus x. And since it's addition, the 4 plus x can be rearranged. If it's addition only, subtract, we definitely don't want to start rearranging terms that have a subtract. But if it's addition, addition we can do in any order. So 4 plus x automatic is an x plus 4. But now let's talk about these opposites. And our fix when it, came, when it came to opposites was pick one of them to remain as is. We'll choose that x minus 4 to stay x minus 4. This one I want to change. I want to make that turn into an x minus 4. And I can do that as long as I flip signs up in the numerator. This was an addition problem, so I wasn't about to flip signs again because of a subtract. So that's why in this problem we do go ahead and flip signs. If it was a subtract, I'd flip them back. It would look just the way it started, but addition, so must change those signs, okay? We changed our opposite 4 minus x to its opposite x minus 4, means we have to flip signs on top so everything stays copacetic. And now we can see that that last factor in our LCD is the x minus 4. What's next? Let's get some space and work with these individual fractions. The first one, 2x minus 3 over x plus 7 times x minus 4. What is missing from our denominator that our LCD has? The x plus 4. Multiply that to top and bottom. Our denominator will stay factored. And the numerator, we did FOIL to multiply the numerator out. 2x squared plus 8x and minus 3x. So that plus 8x minus 3x is giving us this f positive 5x. And last, minus 3 times positive 4, the minus 12. And denominator factored. Let's take our second fraction, bringing down the minus x minus 1 over x plus 4 times x minus 4. And I just wrote it as x plus 4 to match up the LCD. And I wrote it there because we just traditionally see the variable first and number behind it. x plus 4 is much more just familiar looking than 4 plus x. That's the only reason I used it that way. What is missing from our denominator? The x plus 7. Multiply that to top and bottom. It will just line up in our denominator to stay in factored form. But again, it's FOIL for the numerators. Negative x times x is that negative x squared. Negative x times positive 7. There's a negative 7x and a negative 1x together to make the negative 8x, and then negative 1 times positive 7, negative 7. We're at, at the light at the end of the tunnel. Our denominators match, so we are ready to combine these two fractions into a single fraction using that LCD, and the numerator combine like terms. 2x squared with negative x squared would give us a positive 1x squared, positive 5x with negative 8x together 
makes the negative 3x. And finally, negative 12 with negative 7 is negative 19. A quick check that we cannot factor the numerator and then we cannot cancel. There is our final answer. Let's do another example here. It's, we're increasing the difficulty, but we're getting close to really covering all the ins and outs that we have with these kinds of problems. Well, not all, but a good deal of them. So let's start with, what do we see? Three fractions, and our operations are addition and subtraction. That means addition, subtraction, we need a common denominator. Let's find that LCM. We will factor each denominator, starting with x squared minus 1, it's a difference of squares. We can factor that as x plus 1 times x minus 1. How about our middle denominator? Did you observe that we had a set of opposites, x squared minus 1 over here, with 1 minus x squared there? Spotting opposites means we can fix that denominator, turn it into x squared minus 1, just as long as we flip the sign of all the terms in our numerator also. Now this one it just had one term, the 5x. We change it from positive to negative. And what can we do now with this x squared minus 1? Factor it just like we did that first denominator, x plus 1 times x minus 1. How about our third denominator? Any changes that you want to make here? A subtract, we should probably make a change. Could we do any factoring to this x minus 1? No way to factor that. I just have written x minus 1 in parentheses. Now let's change our subtract. The subtract we change to add as long as we're flipping signs of terms back here. So in this example, we saw the two situations where we flip the signs of the numerator. One would be if we see our denominator as opposites, that would be a case where we change the sign of the numerator. And a subtract problem, we change sign of the numerator in that case also. So the two times where we change signs of the numerator, we see both in this example. Let's build the LCD. What factors will we need? x plus 1. We got 1 here, 1 here, none here. So once is enough. And how about x minus 1? 1 there, 1 there, 1 there. And remember, it's not about total. Where do we see the most in each place? Well, once, once, once. It's a tie, three-way tie with showing it just once. So once is enough. There is our LCD. What's the next move? Each of these fractions, we need to do some changing to make it have the LCD. First one has the LCD. Nice. Second one also has the LCD. Also nice. The third fraction is the only one that needed change. That's what I've brought down, the third fraction. Negative 1 over x minus 1. What is missing from the denominator? the x plus 1. We'll multiply that to top and bottom. We'll keep the denominator factored. We will multiply the numerators. And in this case, one term times two terms. That has to be distribute. Negative 1x. And then the negative 1 times positive 1 is our negative 1. All three of our fractions now have the LCD. We did no change to the first, no change to the second, the third one we did change to this fraction down here. And we combine like terms from all three of the numerators. Let's start with x's. There's a negative 5x and a negative 1x to make negative 6x. And then the constants, a negative 5 with negative 1 makes negative 6. Can we simplify? Can we factor, then cancel? Two negative terms I recommend trying to, can trying to factor out a negative and we definitely spot that there is a 6 we can bring out from each term. So we're factoring out a negative 6. That would leave us with x plus 1 in parentheses. If you just factored out a 6, hopefully you would see some opposites that you could still cancel and bring out a negative at that point. So I prefer if we see negatives, think about maybe the GCF as a negative. And often that's what makes the canceling part go a bit smoother. Negative 6 is the GCF, leaves us with a positive x and a positive 1. And you're ahead of me, you're spotting the canceling already. x plus 1's cancel. Leave us with a negative 6 in the numerator and x minus 1 in the denominator. And there is our final simplified answer.